In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build your own MCP server using Python that can power real world tools like adding data to a database, pulling data, or even editing your images. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's what lets AI tools like Claude or Cursor use their own custom functions. And if you never used MCP before, I have created a beginner friendly video for you to check it out. Now, if you're ready to build your own MCP server, let's get started with this video. And we're going to take a look at how to set up our first MCP server with the official MCP Python package SDK. So first we're going to navigate to the MCP Python SDK to get started by adding MCP to our Python project. So I'm just going to click on this and here you can see this is going to be the first step, which is recommended to install UV to manage our Python projects. So if you haven't done so, just check out the UV website to install UV on your local machine based on your operating system. So once you have UV installed, we're then going to set up our MCP server using the UV package manager. So we're going to copy this command here and be able to come back to terminal and run UV initialize our MCP server demo project. And once we initialize it, we're going to CD into the MCP server demo. So here you can see we have initialized our MCP server demo project inside of our directory or inside of our desktop. And once we are initialized, we are CD into the MCP server demo. Okay, so the next step is basically adding MCP to our project dependencies. So we're just going to use UV add MCP CLI. So we're just going to copy this command and navigate back to the terminal and run this command. All right, so now it's done the installation. Let's go back to the code base and see what's inside of our project. All right, so inside of our code base, you can see for the MCP server demo, we have a couple of things inside of our directories. So we have our virtual uh, environment here, as well as our git ignore. And then here we have the main.py. And inside of the main.py, you can see we have a simple function, which basically prints the text into the console. So what we can do is we're just going to follow the documentation for the quick start. And you can see that we have a simple MCP server that will basically expose a calculator tool and some data, right? So here you can see uh, for this code, it basically imports the MCP server, which is called fast MCP, which creates the MCP server. And we can use this instance of the fast MCP. And by the way, this is just a name for the MCP server. And then we can be able to use the MCP server here to basically create a tool and also create a resource. Now quickly, I just want to talk about the difference between resource and tools. Now resource here, we basically try to expose data kind of like a get endpoints where we're trying to load the information into the large language models context. Where tools, on the other hand, we're basically trying to execute the code, right? Maybe we're trying to delete in data, creating the data, or also try to update the data, right? So back to the code here, uh, we're basically trying to use tool here to make a calculation, right? We're trying to add the two numbers together and return back to the uh, the result. And then we also have the resource, which we'll talk about in a second, but you can see that it takes a name or a greeting and it generates a text. So we're just going to copy this code and come back to the uh, Visual Studio code, replace the current existing uh, main.py with the new code. So once we have the new code here, we're just going to start our MCP server and play around with it in our Claude desktop. So that's exactly what we're going to do first. So first, we want to make sure that we have Cloud Desktop installed on your local machine. So currently, I'm using the Mac version. So I'm just going to install this in Mac OS version. OK, so once we have Cloud Desktop installed, and then we're going to run the command here to basically start our MCP server. So we're just going to copy this command, paste it here to the terminal. Currently, I'm in the MCP server demo, and I'm going to run uv run mcp install server.py. And because here inside of our code, we have main.py, which in this case, we're going to replace the command here to be main.py instead of the server.py. So back to the terminal, we're just going to replace the server.py to main.py here, and we're just going to run this. Okay, so here you can see we have successfully installed the demo MCP server into the Claude application. So here back to the Claude, we can be able to verify that the configuration has added. So first we're going to click on Claude and click on settings for Mac. And then inside of the settings here, we're going to click on developer. All right, so once we're in developer, we're going to click on edit config. And once it has a folder pops up, we're just going to see a Claude desktop configuration.json. So we're just going to open this in VS Code. And here you can see inside of the settings, we can be able to see that we have the MCP servers. And inside of it, we have our demo, which in this case, we have two sections. One is the command and the other one is the arguments. So this is the command right here. We're using UV to run with the MCP CLI. And after that, it's going to MCP run this script right here, which is the same script that we have right here. Okay, so it's basically just going to run this MCP server 
that we have just initialized. So now if we were to go back to Claude, open a new chat, you can see that at the bottoms here, usually it shows a MP MCP server tools. In this case, it doesn't. So here it's just the style. So what we can do is we can either restart our Claude desktop or we can be also be able to make some changes to the settings. So right now you can see that inside of settings, you can see the demo has failed. And here what we can do is click on the edit configurations. And I'm just gonna open this again with VS Code. So back to VS Code, we're just gonna replace the command UV with UV's absolute path. So to get the absolute path, we're just gonna open a terminal and we're just going to say which UV, which will give us the absolute path for UV. We're just going to copy this, replace it with the command here. And here back to Claude, we're just going to restart Claude. And after restart, it's basically a prompt to um, grant access for the desktop folder. So we're just going to click on allow to grant access for the desktop folder here. And then after Claude has started, you can see that we have a hammer here, which is the one MCB tool. If we were to click on this, you can see that it's the add function that we just mentioned. So then here we can be able to ask a question and I'm just going to say, can you add one plus two from the MCP tool? And you can see that it's basically calculating one plus two using the MCP tool that we specify. And here you can see it basically gave us a prompt to allow tool from demo and to do the calculation. So basically what we can do is we're just gonna say allow for this chat. And then you can see that it gave us the answer which in this case, one plus two is three. All right, so that's basically how you can be able to create your MCP server in your local machine and be able to use it in Claude Desktop. But I can also be able to add more things onto the main.py. And here you can see inside of the main.py here, I have changed the name for the MCP server called the AI to-do list. And the goal for this MCP is to basically have the to-do list functionality. And here I basically have a in-memory storage for the to-do list, but you can always change this to be like your database or maybe your external APIs, right? And here we have a couple MCB tools, right? So these are the tools that we create. And here you can see for the MCB tools, we have add, list, update, and delete. And we also have resource here to list out the latest to-do item. And then we also have the prompt, which will basically generate the prompt to get the summary for the to-dos. So here you can see for each functions, we will basically start with a decorator, which is in this case is a MCB tool, or it's gonna be an MCP resource or a prompt. So then inside of our function, you can see that first we have our comments and the comments contains three things. One is what this function do, then it's gonna be the inputs, right? What kind of inputs it's gonna be expecting. And then we also have the outputs for what kind of outputs this function is going to output. And then here's our code. Basically, we're trying to add the item onto the to-do list. And then we're just going to return a output that the item has been added. And same thing for the list to-dos. Since we don't have any inputs for this function, we're just going to talk about what this function does. And then we're also going to add the comments for the output of this function. And then there we also have update and delete. And in terms of resource here, you can see that this is our path. Basically, this is the to-dos and the path here is, is the latest, right? And we can also be able to specify arguments. For example, I can also say like, I want to have the ID and we can also pass the ID for the query parameter here. And we can specify this is the string ID from the query parameter. And then we also have prompt, which basically returns a string. And you can see that we have our comments for the function. And here you can see we basically returns a prompt. And this prompt basically summarizes the following to-do list, to-do items, and basically we pass the to-do list into the string. And then this prompt will basically pass to the large language model here, which will basically summarize the to-do list. Now, of course, there's also other things that we can do. For example, we can be able to add an image. For example, same thing for the MCB tool, but we can also be able to return an image for what the user is looking for. For example, they want to create a thumbnail. They can be able to pass the image path. And then we can be able to, for example, reshape the image, uh, change the image, or maybe edit the image, for example, right? And like I mentioned, you can also use MCP server for database integration. So for example, here you can see the example uses SQLite. And here you can see we have the MCP, which will in this case is going to be a resource. And we're trying to get the schema for the database. First, we're going to set the connection. We're going to, then we're going to get the schema. And then once we get the schema, it's going to return the schema as an output. And then we also have the MCP tool here, which will basically query the data. So this is going to be a SQL query, I believe. And basically once we connect it, we're just going to execute the SQL query. And once we have the result for the query, it's going to return the data back to the user. All right, so that's basically how you can be able to create your MCP server and how you can use it in Claude desktop applications. Now to conclude everything, when you create your MCP server, there are three primitives that we need to watch out for when we're creating our MCP server. So the first one is prompts. These are prompts, basically a template prompts that we uh, generate from the MCP server. And then we also have resources, which is equivalent to our Git endpoints. And these are basically gonna be file contents, 
API responses and such. And these are basically going to be contextual data, which will be managed by the client application. And then we also have tools, which will basically equivalent to function calls that are going to be used by large language models to take actions, things like API calls or data updates and such.